Hello, hello, hello guys. How are we doing today? Um, I have just gone live on our fantastic, fantastic session. Um, today we are going to be drawing lots of exciting things. We are going to be drawing mermaids and sea creatures. And to give you a flavour of what we are going to be drawing, I'm going to show you today's illustrations. Uh, this is the title of today's session, Learn to Draw Sea Creatures and Mermaids with Andy Sanders, award-winning illustrator and author Andrew Sanders. Um, and we're going to be doing this sort of a thing where we've got some big, bad, scary monsters that are like chomping their way through uh, little mermaids. And we've got a little mermaid to uh, have quite feisty and have certainly got a trident to look after themselves. Um, we're not just going to be drawing those guys. We are going to be drawing other things too. Um, hello. Hi there, Joanne Brady. Hello. Thank you for saying hi. It's always nice when people do that. Um, I'm going to be showing you a few other things too. Um, we have got here, as you can see, we've got a cheeky little octopus. We've got some sea snails. Uh, we've got a little uh, turtle bumbling along. I love turtles. They're just so chilled all the time. Uh, and we have got uh, a nice little crab hiding as well. And what I thought would be quite fun for our session today is to draw our sea creatures having a game of hide and seek. Um, hi there, Anthea. Nice of you guys to join us. Um, by the way, I will just say, I have noticed that there are some people, I don't know who, some people that are posting. Watch the live stream here. Ignore all of that. Some guy, there you go. There's another one posting it. Um, Please ignore anybody that's posting rubbish saying go and watch the live stream over there. I have no idea what that stuff is. It's nothing to do with me. Uh, you guys just concentrate on watching all these fantastic uh, drawings and uh, create some of your own. And what I would love to see by the end of this session, I would love to see you guys uh, create something of your own, something that has got your own uh, special take on it. So you can take your turtles, you could do a whole swarm of turtles crawling along the beach, or you could draw cheeky octopuses getting up to all sorts of mischief with all their tentacles. So these art sessions are really, really about, um, you know, you guys doing your own thing with it afterwards, not just copying what I do. Uh, so, Having said all of that, guys, um, there is something I wanted to, to just very quickly go over with you. Because somebody said, how can we never do any warm-up activities, Andy? Why do we always jump into the actual illustrations? Well, I can do warm-up activities. I totally can. Um, and I'll show you a great warm-up activity involving a banana and a biro. And you guys will find this amazing. Um, if you have a banana and a biro, as I asked of you, uh, brilliant. If not, no worries. What you may not have realised is that you can actually draw on fruit like this. You can draw on a banana with a biro, and it's still perfectly edible afterwards. And you can draw stuff like, say, a smiley face. Whee! And you can make your banana look perfectly happy. Um, I love doing this, and every morning my son comes downstairs and he finds a happy smiley banana who is trying to run away and not get eaten. Um, it is silly, it is cheeky, it is great, great fun. Um, and again, sorry, I can see there's so many people here talk. There's some guys that are just posting absolute rubbish about where to watch this live stream. Don't go anywhere else. Watch it here. I've no idea what these uh, cheeky little rascals are trying to do, getting people to go to different websites. Anyway, right. That is just a little bit of fun. If you ever have the time, do all sorts of things. Draw some little feet on there. Draw hands, draw arms, draw all sorts. Um, and just before we move on, I thought me and my banana would uh, share something jolly with you. Um, today, if anybody wants to get a copy of my award-winning picture book, you can do. Um, I had some people last week that said that, unfortunately, they hadn't got paid yet, so they wanted to get a book, uh, but because I only did the promo code for one day, they couldn't buy it. Um, so I am doing it at the end of this month, too. Uh, so for today only, uh, Banana50 will get you 50% off. Um, it's a little bit of fun, something for you guys to enjoy. Um, and, uh, yeah, hopefully bring a bit of joy during lockdown. So if you want to get a copy of my, my picture book, it's suitable for anyone between the ages of about two and six years old or anyone who's just very, very silly. Right. So guys, let's get stuck into the actual drawing side of things here. This will be great fun. Um, I'm going to start off and I'm going to do, um, the, the mermaid first. I promised somebody in particular I would do that. Um, hi, I'm going to say hello to Jack. Hi guys. Um, and thank you. Hi, Ayana. Thank you. Lovely to see you guys saying hello. That's great. Um, so get your pens or paper at the ready. Um, doesn't matter if you're using pencils. If you want to draw in pencil and go over in pen later, that is cool too. And what we're going to do, I've got a sheet of paper here. And if you imagine there's the middle of your page, over on this side, I'm going to be putting my mermaid. And over on this side, I'm going to be putting my scary sea creature. So with that in mind, halfway up my page and around about, not all the, she's not going to take all of it up, just around about the middle, we're going to do our fantastic uh, mermaid here okay and this is how it's going to go i always oh, oh, sorry what i will do as well i'll turn this light on just so you guys can see a bit better sometimes that really does help there we go um let's put in let's put in our mermaid first and what i like to do is to start off with her fringe i always think that doing her face is the most important bit because we can get a feel for how happy and jolly she is and to do a fringe we need to do a little curve 
that comes down like this. It's almost like the letter C, okay? And this is going to be the side of her fringe. And it's going to be flicking along, and it's going to be resting over the top of her face. So what we do is we do a little flick up like this. And it's only a little thing, because this is where her hair is. And then we go down again. And then again, like up and down. And you can see I'm moving away from this letter C here. And it's around about as wide as this shape is that I've drawn. I've gone about that far again. And then all I have to do is see about joining it back up with another. It's almost like a C. But this time, instead of curving around, we flick off at the end. OK. And that sort of a shape gives you a lovely fringe on your mermaid. OK. Um, she's going to be a nice, happy, cheery one. So we're going to put a smiley face in there, too. Um, I'm going to see about put in a nice little curve in and here's a little tip for you um you guys that have been joining me for the last few weeks we've got quite a few of you now we've got over 350 people joining in today's session some of you all know that i sometimes draw men and sometimes draw ladies well here's a tip if you want to draw somebody and make them look feminine or female what you can do is put on a really delicate curve like this for their face okay that's a really gentle curve now, if it was a man and you wanted him to look more manly, what you do is instead of having that curve, you have a more square jaw. It goes down and then it goes across almost like a right angle. But to make somebody look feminine, you give them a delicate curvy jaw. OK, uh, we're going to have her with a cheeky smile. So I'm going to put in two little dots for her eyes here and you guys can do the same. And then to make it smile look a bit cheeky, we took it to one side. We don't put it straight underneath the eyes. That just makes it look like a normal smile. To make it look a little bit cheeky, like she's smiling out the side of her, her mouth, we do this kind of a thing. And now she's looking a little bit more impish and cheeky. OK. So with this in mind, guys, um, we want to make her look a little bit uh, underwatery as well. So we're going to give her a starfish. Um, starfish are going to be um, super duper cute little things here on her, her hair. So I'm going to draw a little one. We do a bump up like that. So it's like the, the letter U, but upside down. And to make it look 3D, and I, I love making things look 3D, as all you guys will know, what we do for the next one, we don't make it as long. Instead, these two on the side, we make them a little bit shorter and stubbier. And this is to do with the, the shape of the starfish on her head. We then go down like this. And do two more that join together. And she's got a little starfish that's going to be sat on the side of her hair there. OK. Um, she's going to need lots of long flowing hair. but. As you guys who joined me last week to draw fantastic hamburgers will know, um, and if you didn't do this session, by the way, this one was awesome. It was great fun. This is in my videos. Go back and check it out because this was just like epic. I love doing this one. Uh, but the secret to doing lots of good illustrations is to always remember to leave space for the things that are going to come afterwards. OK, so what we're going to do is make sure that we do leave space for her hair, but we're going to put in where her arm is because that is super duper important. OK, so first off, I'm going to have her arm coming out and forwards like this. This is her front arm. It's going to go a bit past. It's just a horizontal line. It's going to go a bit past where her fringe is. OK, so it's a little bit further along. And then at this point, we're going to put her thumb in. And all that is is a round circle at the end of her arm. Oh, I can see somebody. Nala loves uh, mermaids. Good. Uh, I hope you enjoy today's session if it's your first one. That's great. Thank you for the comments, guys. Um, and that's her thumb. OK, and it's because she's going to be holding something like this thumb on top and then hand underneath. Um, what we're going to do is get a little circle, well, a big circle now underneath like this. And it's going to sit underneath that big one. And this is her holding onto her trident. That's her hand now. Uh, we're going to tilt things ever so slightly. And to do this, we're going to um, put her trident. So it's not perfectly flat and horizontal. It's going to be pointing up ever so slightly like this. OK. Uh, what I might do, I can see that somebody is getting very frustrated uh, at the, the prospect of oh, we've got lots of guys saying cheeky, cheeky comments about where to watch this video. Don't go anywhere to watch this video. It's right here, guys. Um, what I will see about doing is if I can make my wife an admin because she's sat in the next room, I will see if I can make it so that she can actually ban these people who are doing lots of naughty, cheeky comments, because I don't think it's fair on all you guys that have come along uh, for for our um, uh for our event, I will see if I can get it. I might not be able to do it today, but I will see if I can get it so that, um, let me just see if I can click two buttons here and then she might be able to, uh, let me just see. 
I'm, I'm so sick. I don't think it's fair that you guys have come here for such a lovely session and it's getting completely ruined by people that are being cheeky. Anyway, look, I'll, I'll try and do that in the background so it doesn't impact on you. But anyway, what we're going to do now is our trident. And the tridents are super duper easy. What we do is a big long line coming out, not perfectly flat, but it's going to be pointing up like that ever so slightly. Uh, oh, and somebody said you can report those comments as spam. Oh, I didn't know you can do that, but thank you for, for saying as much. That really helps. If you guys can report those comments as spam, that makes it a world of, uh, it makes it better for everyone, doesn't it? Uh, right, here we go. And I'm going to thicken out this line and this middle bit, this trident is going to run all the way underneath. And I'm going to make sure that I leave a point on the other side of her hand where it's coming out. Okay, that I'm going to finish this off later. It will keep going and going and going. But right now, I just need to have it marked where she's going to go. Um, and here's the tricky. Uh, sorry, here's the nifty bit. Drawing tridents is sometimes a bit awkward, but it's like the forks that we did last week. We can make it look pointy by doing this. It's just the letter U, and it curves round like that. That gives us this wonderful trident shape with a big point at the end. And you can make it as long or as pointy as you want. And if you wanted to make it look extra pointy, you can make the middle one longer, like so. Okay. Um, hi there. Hi, Daniela in Peterborough. Thank you for coming and joining us. That's lovely. Great to see you coming back. Thank you. Um, so this is our trident, and I'm very, very happy with how it's looking. But now we need to give her the rest of her arms as well. She's going to have another arm floating off behind her. And to make her look... Um, uh, like a, a sort of a, a nice ladylike delicate mermaid what we're going to do now is take her hair and so just to return over here we're going to come back to just where the edge of her fringe is and just on this last little flick out that we had we're going to do a curve that comes down and it wants to run off in line with her chin okay like that and that's because her hair is going to run along her arm like this, her arm's going to come out, and this time the arm's going to curve up, kind of like a ballerina when you're putting your arm out to a point. Okay, here we go. And then we flick it round. This is her hand here, like so. And now she's got a nice long pair of arms, kind of like a ballerina with her arms spread out. There we go. We then come back under like this, and we have to make sure we stop just where her hair's going to be, because she needs to have her body. So this bit can be a bit tricky, but it's a long, nice arm, a little bit like the dinosaur, actually, that we did in the first week where we had, you know, put two dots on there and you've got his eyes. Um, but that's what we've got so far for our, our, our mermaid. Um, now, we need to do the rest of her hair and the rest of her head. So once you've got this arm in, we can then put in her hair and the hair is going to curve down like this. It's going to start near the fringe, not right at the top of it, a little bit lower. And it's going to be a curve that goes behind our starfish. It's going to come down and it's going to flick away as well because she's underwater and all her hair is going to be flicking off too. Okay. Now our mermaid is going to be wearing uh, something on her top. She's not going to be wearing a lot, um, but it is going to be something that just covers up her chest. Okay. And so when you've got your two arms here in between, just underneath where her mouth is, you can see uh, there's her mouth. We want to do this so that we have a little brassier that's going to go down and up and down okay so it's curvy at the front and then it makes a v and then it flicks down like so and joins up under the arm okay now if you guys are super duper illustrators and you love drawing say clams and things as well you can do that and put an actual clam on there as like i think ariel the little mermaid that's what she's got and things um but for keeping it nice and simple today that's what we're doing and it gives the effect of this young lady having uh, something just on her chest there okay um we're also going to give her a little tummy and a belly button uh, and depending upon what you want to do you can either give her a plump tummy or a skinny tummy or anything in between it's completely up to you it doesn't really matter uh, today i'm going to give her um, a tummy that's just pretty much straight down and to do that I put one line at the front here and the back line, rather than going straight down, I'm going to put it slightly off to the side and it makes it look like she's just getting a bit wider towards her hips. OK, because just about every single person on the face of the earth uh, will have uh, wide hips so that they can uh, have their legs and things attached. Now, she's not going to have legs. Instead, she's going to have uh, a fish's tail. 
And to make it look super duper awesome, we're gonna try and uh, put in a little bit of a 3D effect here. And this is where a belly button is so important. I bet you didn't know your belly buttons are important in drawing, but they totally are. Now the belly button wants to be not in the middle, okay, that, that wouldn't be quite right. Instead, it wants to be over to one side, just here, like that. And if you could add your belly button, that gives you a really good reference point for what we're about to do next. So it's not in the middle, but just down to one side down here. And what we do is we put a little curve down like this and it stops underneath the belly button. It's a very gentle thing, very delicate. And then the next one is going to start up here. And it's going to curve down too. And it meets forming like a really delicate V shape just there underneath her belly button. And this is why she turns into a fish and becomes a mermaid. Um, we're going to put on, I don't quite know what you'd call this, but um, you can do the same thing when you're drawing collars and stuff like this on people too, if you're ever drawing the necks. Um, but what we do is we go just back to her, her back and we go flick round like so and join up. Okay. Um, similar actually to what we did when we did planets as well. Again, check that video out if you haven't already done so. We did some fantastic stuff with rings around planets. Um, but doing that makes it look like she's got this sort of nice divide where she becomes a mermaid. Um, so here we go, guys. Uh, we're now going to put on the fish bit on the bottom. To do so, what we have to do, um, we give her a nice gentle curve all the way underneath. And watch this first. Don't try doing it at the same time as me. But we're going to go down. And then back round and up. So it's kind of like the letter U and it needs to be nice and wide. You can see it's gone even further than where her hand is. So it's got to go down, round and back up. Okay. Um, to do the back of her... Um, body what we do is we do have a little slightly different curve it's not the exact same shape it's got to come out a bit because she's got a bum so it's going to come out and then it's going to go back round so it goes out and then down and then back up and we can make this join up together here to a point like this um, she's going to need to have a tail here because she's not got anything to sort of flip her, her way through the water with, has she? Let's see if we can sort that out. We're going to go curve like that. And I'll do that one again as well on the other side. It's a curve that goes gently up and then flicks out. And then carefully just comes back in a single gentle curve, no flicks, just gentle curve and joins back up like that. And there we go. We've got her fish tail. Now, details, oh, thank you very much for saying I'm good at drawing. I, I practice quite a lot. That's how you get good, it's practicing. Now, details, I'm gonna show you what I think is the best way uh, to do a super cool uh, fishy lady. Um, we want to make it look like it is quite realistic. So to do this, we do the letter U here. And then we do another one and another one. And we keep going and going and going and going and going and going and going. And if you can, if you can do it, try to make it go slightly down with the curves of the U's and then back upwards like this. Thank you, Lucy. That's a lovely thing to say. Thank you for saying I'm very good. I'm sure you're very good too. We're going to do another row down here. More U's all in a row. And this is a very quick and easy way that you can give it the effect of having uh, scales. That's the word I was looking for. The effect of having scales. There are other ways too, but I think this is a pretty nifty quick one and it's very easy to do. When you go all the way along your mermaid, there we go. Okay, she's looking pretty sharp. Um, you can also put in a couple of little dashes here on her tail just to make it look like it's got some sort of uh, strength and power to it, like that. Um, and we're almost finished, just two little points left to do. Number one, we need to sort out her trident because it's not quite finished yet. So I'm going to make this a little bit longer here. There we go. And it wants to get wider towards the end as well. Okay, doing it wider makes it look like it's got a bit more weight to it, makes it look a bit more sizable. 
Um, Emma, don't worry. I can see Emma saying you're great. Mine's rubbish. Don't be silly. Right. I have done so many bad drawings in my entire life. The only way I ever got better at anything was by practicing. And I'm sure that's the same for you. So if you're sitting there going, my mermaid's not perfect, don't worry. It doesn't have to be. Um, we're going to do some other things, some stuff that's quite fun. And even if you go completely wrong and it all goes uh, terribly, hey, you can always go and draw on a banana. And that is brilliant fun too. Now, <clears throat> this last bit then, uh, we're going to do a hair now. To make it look like she's underwater, we want to have all different strands of hair floating in different directions. So what I'm going to do here, under her arm, I'm going to have a line that comes out, goes down and flicks up. And then rather than having it joining all the way back up, I'm going to go back and stop there. I'm then going to have a bit of her hair that flicks the other way. And it's the, you know, you can see it going back up. And all these are a little gentle curves, like so. That make it look like she's got long flowing hair. I'm also going to do the same over here. So continuing on behind her arm there. You can see she's got this lovely long flowing hair. And again there. And this time I think I'll make it go off. It'll disappear behind the bum. There we go. She's got all that hair there. Um, somebody's asking what kind of pen I'm using. This is called a Faber-Castell Pit Artist brush pen. And it's black 199. Okay. Uh, if anybody's having trouble with the live stream, um, you can watch this again afterwards. I can see somebody saying I'm crashing. Don't worry, you can watch it back. I will put it on my Facebook page and I'll put it on YouTube. Um, okay, so... Uh, right, that is our mermaid. I think she's looking fantastic, but she's going to need somebody over here to be playing games with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a big scary sea creature and he, she's going to be pointing her um, uh, her trident right at him. And so to do that, guys, what we're going to do, I remember I did say we'll leave all this space for her and this space over here for him. What we're going to do, and this is way easier, by the way, um, we're going to do a big round shape. And this is going to be the body of our great big sperm whale. And sperm whales, are the, they can dive, you might not know this, they can dive the deepest of any animal in the whole world. Deeper than divers, uh, deeper than um, uh, just about anything. Sperm whales can dive the deepest out of any mammal in the whole world. So here we go, here's how we do, do one. We start off at the back where his tail's gonna be. And we curve round, up to the top, and then just before we draw the rest of his body, we stop here. And there's a good reason for it. Um, this little gap here is so important. So make sure you do this like I've done, like a big letter N. OK, and then we're going to come leave a little gap. And then we're going to come and join back round like this. And this time it's not quite perfect. He's going to get thinner. Sperm whales start off thin at the back and then they get big towards the front where their mouths are. OK, um, here we go. The next bit is the big row of teeth, and I love drawing this bit. This is my favourite bit of all the underwater drawing, and you'll see why in a second. This gap is really important because we need to give him a really big lip. He's going to have a big lip that comes out like that, and it can go up and down a bit, like so. And it stops around about two thirds or halfway across his, his body. Okay, um, Michelle? I hope you're drawing an awesome coconut there. That sounds like A-OK -okay to me. What we're going to put on is a row of teeth. And we always start on the left-hand side. And we do a little one. And then we do a big one. And all of these teeth are lined up in a row next to each other. So you have them overlapping. So every time you draw a tooth, the next one just comes somewhere off the line of the previous one. And we're giving him a whole mouthful of teeth like this and that's why we had to leave the gap because we without that gap we wouldn't be able to have his teeth making it look like they're going round the side of his face um I think I might have him being a bit grumpy today because she's just found him. She's playing hide and seek and she's found him. And to give your characters a bit of emotion, it's quite easy to do. All you have to do is put in two eyes. He doesn't look so grumpy yet, but we can make him look really annoyed. And this is a trick I stole off a guy called Nick Park. There you go. It's a really gentle line that starts up at the top, curves down ever so slightly, then goes back up again. 
And that can make any character look grumpy. If you've ever seen Wallace and Gromit, that is the exact thing that they always do. OK, uh, it's a really expressive thing. Now, to make him look a little bit more imposing, to make him look a little bit scarier and a little bit more grumpy, we can actually put a little line here as well. Similar sort of thing. And that looks uh, like it's reinforcing his bottom lip. It's a gentle curve that just goes up like that. Um, he's not finished yet. He needs a couple more things. He needs to have uh, a little flipper over here at the side. He's all mouth, though. So he's got his flipper over there, and he's going to have another little one just over here. Um, sperm whales are terrifying, but that's because they've got big, chompy jaws, not because they can do anything else. Um, and we need to give him on top, we need to give him what we call the dorsal fin. If anybody ever asks you, where's the dorsal fin on a, a shark or on a, um, a whale or anything like that, it's always on top. So that's really easy too. As you can see there, you just go up, and curve around and down. And there's a difference, you guys might not know this, but there's a difference between sharks and um, sharks are fish, basically, and mammals are very different. Uh, mammals can breathe uh, water, sorry, breathe air and things rather than water. And I want to show you something that's actually kind of cool, and you can always tell the difference then between a. Uh, I'm for a spare bit of paper. Uh, you can always tell the difference. Like, oh, there we go. Just tell the difference between a whale and a shark. Sharks, when you're drawing them, they always have vertical fins like that at the back. Okay. Whereas whales and dolphins, they don't have that at the back of a whale or a dolphin. Theirs goes the other way. So you actually draw more flat. Um, ones like that and that could very easily woo watch this world's quickest seal boop boop Wee. that's a seal <laughs> okay but they have flat um fins at the back whereas sharks and fish have tall ones that go upwards flat and horizontal tall see the difference um anyway that was a bonus seal i hope you enjoyed him um what we're now going to do is put the very last bit on the back of our sperm whale and because this is a whale rather than a shark what we're going to do it's a curve like that, that's one, and then a curve like this, that's two. And it makes him look like he is, in fact, a whale rather than a shark. Um, Okie dokie, right, I think we're getting there. We've got two fantastic looking characters. Um, hopefully, you guys are well on the way too. You've got um, two characters that you're really pleased with as well. And now, we need to add some extra ones. I really like cheeky octopuses. I really like cheeky turtles as well. Um, but I also like making it look like we're really underwater. And so to begin with, we're going to see about putting some extra details on the bottom here. We're going to make it look like we're sat uh, somewhere on a sandy, sandy uh, ocean floor. And to do that, you need to go down to the bottom of your page. If you have enough room for this now, this is great. If you have filled up your page with your uh, illustrations, then just grab another sheet of paper and you can always stick this on underneath afterwards instead. OK, and this is what we do. We get our pen and we take it for a little bit of a wander, a wiggly wander as I like to call it, going up and up and up like that. And the great thing about wiggly lines is you can't go wrong with them. Just little gentle wiggles and then we're going to go down again, wiggling our way along. This is great for doing things like rocks, uh, sand dunes and all sorts of things. And then again, the guys that rule that have seen the planets video that I've done doing planets and aliens, you'll remember this too. This is a really cool thing you can do. We take our pen and we start wiggling backwards and forwards like that and then down and off the page. And this is a really cool thing you can do. If you colour this in dark grey and this in light grey or this in dark brown and this in light brown, it does something fantastic. It's so easy, but it starts to make your drawings look like they're in 3D. It's a really th easy thing. And you're going to see here every single um sand dune that we do or every single rock that we do and we are going to do that octopus i can see louise really wants to do an octopus we are going to do an octopus louise we're going to do that one there every single one that we do is just going to be the same technique and it's super easy now i will do a few special little bits so we've got one in the middle there we're going to do another one over here but on this one i think i'm going to leave a gap so I'm going to leave a little space there, oh, quite a big space actually. This is where we're going to have a treasure chest. So you can draw a line and then leave a nice big space here. And that is going to be where we put a treasure chest. Okay. Uh, we also need to have an octopus, so we can do one of those. I'm going to do another little wiggly line coming up here. I'm going to leave a bit of space for my octopus. And then I'm going to come back down like this. 
and I could even have it disappearing behind that one, couldn't I? Um, I've not done my, my little line down the middle of this one, but again, really easy. Zigzag back and forwards like so. And this starts to make it look like you're going to have a dark side and a dark side. When you guys colour it in, I want to see the difference. Use pencil crowns if you've got them, or if not, felt tips. Put something like light yellow and dark yellow, something like that would be great. Now then, our octopus is going to be here, and he's going to be quite cheeky. He's going to be peering up at the underside of this grumpy looking shark that we've got. Uh, sorry, un grumpy looking sperm whale. And what we do is we uh, look at where we've left this gap. And what we have to do is do a line that comes down and curves back up. That is going to be one of his suckers. So it flicks down, heading that way, and right? it's come all the way around and back up. Then we do a semicircle like that. So that semicircle means that we now have an octopus tentacle that's looking a little bit 3D. We're then going to go along, so we'll keep the rock going a bit. We're going to make sure we've still got another bit of space on the other side. And watch this, I can do it the other way. Uh, when you're drawing, sometimes you find that doing things one way or another way or drawing certain things first or second makes the world a difference. So whatever works for you, do this. I'm going to draw the semicircle again. And the semicircle there is going to join up with my uh, rock cliff. Um, hi Lynn, I can see that yours is looking great so far. That's great to hear. Lovely. Um, we're then going to do another little octopus tentacle coming out and down and then nice and thin and joining back up. The trick to octopus tentacles is trying to keep them the same sort of thickness so they don't get too thin and thick in different places. Now, <laughs> I love to do something with my octopuses. I've never quite worked out why, but what I do, um, I'm going to have him looking upwards, which means that he, he's going to be um, peering backwards. He's going to be looking up at this dude and he's going to be wearing sunglasses. I always give my octopuses sunglasses and I can't tell you why. It's just fun. Try this. And anytime you have to draw a creature, an animal, a bird, anything like that, try giving them sunglasses because it's just it makes them look ridiculous. And I love it. Um, so I'm going to make him look upwards. And the way I'm going to do this is by drawing a curve like this. And you can do this in pen or pencil. Doesn't matter. It goes in and then out and round, and then curves out at the bottom. So where his neck is, it gets a little bit thicker, uh, and where his head is, it's thicker, and then this little bit in the, in the middle here, that's skinny, okay? And then sunglasses on an octopus go like this. They go a perfectly straight line, halfway up the curve of his head. We then do a letter like that, that's a U, and another letter U, and then we do a U upside down to join up these shapes. Okay, so you can see I've done two U's and a little U now the other way up. And this is super duper easy. You can draw sunglasses like this anytime you want, and you can make them look 3D by giving them a reflection. And all that is is diagonal lines. You can do this with a pen or a pencil doesn't matter. And there we go. Um, he needs to have some thickness on his arms, on his sunglasses too. So you just make them thick at one side and they flick in over there. And our octopus is now smiling. Uh, Warren, I can see you say that you, you suck at this. You don't, you, you're not bad at this. Um, keep practicing, dude. That's all I've ever done. Okay. Um, nobody is perfect at anything first time around. Nobody's perfect second time. Have another go at this. Um, if you really want to look at something, if you're thinking, oh, this is a bit tricky, but you're enjoying it, have a look at the very first video that I did, which was robots and dinosaurs. That one was the easiest one to do, and you get amazing results really quickly. Okay, uh, we're now going to put in a couple more tentacles. And what I like about octopuses is that they can be hiding, but you can also draw their tentacles coming up to get up to mischief. So I'm going to draw another curve. This one starts down at his last tentacle and flicks backwards and up. And that's just like a letter C, but backwards. We're then going to put a tiny letter C the right way around on top of it, like that. Um, and this is where we're going to add some suction cups. Now I'm going to cheat and I'm going to switch to a really little detailed pen here. But if you're using the same size one, it doesn't matter. All you have to do is draw really thin, skinny O's. Um, and I will show you guys how to do that as well. Um, 
I'm going to get my little bit of paper. For those of you that have been with me for many, 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 many weeks, you will remember that I've talked to you about this before. If you had, say, a coin and you look at it from above, it's perfectly round. But if you're looking at it on an angle, like, um, you know, here, you get a very different shape, okay? And this is called an ellipse, and that's what we're going to be doing on our octopus's tentacles, okay? I'm going to be drawing ellipses that are very thin, like this. So they're kind of like a circle, but not quite, okay? They're not perfectly round. Instead, I'm drawing them on an angle. And these little circles want to follow the path of my octopus's tentacle, the one that we've just drawn. And that is how you can make it look like he's got suction cups. Uh, we're going to do one last octopus tentacle. Same thing again. Um, this time over here, where we've got our, our rock, we're going to draw a little backwards letter C, like that. We're then going to draw a really big one up like this. And then a tiny little C at the top. And now that we've done that, we have got lots of space here. To do our little suction cups. There we go. OK. Um, I think we've got a pretty nifty looking octopus there with his suction cups. I always recommend as well, if you're going to colour in your octopus, do the octopus in something like an orange or a green or a blue. And do the suction cups. Colour those in in like pink or something, something a li little bit more soft and delicate. It always makes them just look like they've got uh, a bit more dexterity, a bit more cheekiness about them. OK. Um, so, right, guys, we're looking pretty good. Um, I want to get in a couple of other creatures now as well um we're, we're doing really well we've we've been going for about 35 minutes so i'm going to do a few more we're going to do a turtle uh we're going to do a very very quick one here we're going to have a happy little starfish too um our happy starfish is going to be stuck to the side of a rock so you can choose any um anywhere where you've done your your rock so far um we're going to have a go at doing a starfish similar to how we did the one up here and it's just an upside down letter u and then a smaller, not quite as uh, long, U on the side. And a one on the other side too. And then we're going to have two that are just pointing out like his legs. Like that. And so a starfish is really just a bunch of letter U's. And then we can give him a smiley face. Again, I'm going to do a really fine detailed one here. Whee. That is a happy, happy starfish. OK. Um, now, it feels like a million years ago, but we actually said over here we were going to put ourselves a treasure chest in. If you guys have left space for that, that's super. If not, um, doesn't matter. You can just watch how we do this and then you can add yours uh, afterwards. But treasure chests are great to do and they work really well as well with pirate ships. Um, I could have had a, pirate, um, a treasure chest on this disappearing off. This is the one that I did the other week. Again, do check out this video too. It's great fun. Uh, for all the parents that are watching, I've got about seven hours of videos that you can watch now. Um, so, yep, yeah, get stuck into that afterwards. But here's a treasure chest. So, we're going to put the treasure chest on an angle. And what's often easiest is to rotate your paper like so. Because if you rotate it, then you can draw everything. And when I say draw a straight line down, you can see what I mean. If my page is turned, it's kind of harder to describe. So, here we go. We're going to draw a straight line down here. And a straight line down here and those should be what we call parallel lines okay they should be pointing in the same direction for those of you guys that are really good at maths you'll remember parallel lines um they're lines that are always going in the same direction and then once we've done this we're going to put in a wiggly woggly line to make it look like it's stuck in some sand it's sunk to the bottom of the ocean and even though my two lines here are perfectly, perfectly um, lined up there. You know, the top of them is in the exact same spot. And you guys can do that. If yours is a bit taller or shorter, it doesn't matter. So long as you've got it so that they've got, um, they stop at the same height, you can do the next bit and make it look awesome. And if it's a bit too, like if you've got one that's a bit too long, like I'll make mine longer, it doesn't matter. Just make the other line a bit longer too. That's okay. Right. We're going to have one extra line in here. It's, it's not going to be in the middle. OK, it's going to be slightly to one side and this line is going to be shorter. OK, so if this was a big brother line and this was a big sister line, this is the tiny little baby one. OK, and there's a reason for that. 
This little baby line is going to be where we join up the other two. Watch this. And what we're going to end up with, guys, is a treasure chest in 3D. And people think drawing 3D is hard. It's not. It's actually dead dead easy when you know the secrets. And that's what I like to show you guys, the secrets on how to make things look awesome. We're now going to do another line over here. We're going to put some detail on. Um, we're going to put on like golden um, straps all the way around, metal straps, and then wood in the middle. And so to do that, over here, we draw a line perfectly, uh, a perfectly happy line straight down. And then our other line, it's not going to be... Um, the exact same height instead what we have to do is have it so that it will uh, we're going to end up following the direction of the top line that we drew there that angle one and then we can go down again and i'll do the same thing over here and you'll see again i'm going to go there and all i'm doing is making sure my lines stay the same distance away from the edge of our treasure chest Okay, if you find this a bit tricky, don't worry, it can be tricky, but just have another practice at it afterwards and see if you can get the hang of it. Uh, we then need to have a curve. It's almost a semicircle, but it's not quite. It's a little bit more leany, like that. Um, a perfect curve would go sort of up here somewhere. This one doesn't, it's a little bit more leany. It sort of points that way a little bit. It's quite quite tricky to do, but if you can do it, good on you uh, we're then going to put another little you can see there i'm going to make it look like we've got um same distance as we had here all the way along this is going to be gold when we're finished with it um we're then going to go all the way over here it's just a horizontal line and it's running in the same direction as this one okay but before we get to the end we need to make sure that we can join this up and make it look right so you don't want to keep going indefinitely, that would be bad. You've got to stop at the right point. And it's really tricky to say exactly when you get to the right point, but this curve here should have an identical one over here, like that. When you do it, it makes it look like that is a 3D treasure chest. Don't worry if yours isn't 3D, it doesn't matter at all, Emma, not a problem. Uh, you can watch this video back afterwards and have a go. I'm now going to draw the last bits of your treasure chest like this. Again, it's a curve that's the same shape as this one. And then there too. And the secret to making it look like a really, really good treasure chest is to add the wooden details and the brass tacks. Um, I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to grab a little pen for doing some details here. Um, those of you that remember from the other week when we did castles uh, and when we did the pirate ship, there is a trick to add in wood effects, and that's what I'm going to do on these little panels now. And all it is is doing horizontal lines and putting the odd circle on as well. And that makes it look like it's got knots in the wood. And again over here, I'm going to do the same thing. Don't make the lines perfectly straight. Give them a little bit of a wiggle and a waggle. And that makes it look like it's wooden. And again over here too, a circle and a line. There we go. Okay. And you've now got a wooden treasure chest that is sunk at the bottom of the ocean okay um somebody's just asked are we going to color it in N no in the is the short answer um i love doing these sessions with you guys but if i did them uh, did the coloring in i would be uh, taking away a lot of the creativity that you guys can have on your own um and i want to show you guys how to draw um the coloring in it's completely up to you you color them what colors you want make them blue green purple whatever you fancy okay uh, thank you very much for your lovely comments there grace thank you i'm sure your drawings are very good too um okay right oh okay right it, we're, we're 43 minutes in i'm going to show you just a couple of other quick little things too i'm going to show you how to draw a, a cheeky little crab uh, and a snail they're super quick uh, and then i will do you guys a turtle as well okay um so our snail uh, we'll have a little snail somewhere over here on the ground where we've already got uh, a little bit of space snails are dead dead easy to do and to make them look cute what we do we do a little curve a c shape that curves around off our um, our seabed and then it's gently going to head back downwards and then he's going to have a sea going the other way a backwards sea that joins him up with the ground and we're going to put in two dots for his eyes and a little smile because he's happy and he's off to see his friend 
the uh, the starfish. And then on top, not right at the front, but sort of in the middle of his, his back, this is where we start to draw a big round circle. That's where his shell's going to be. And in there, just put a little spiral. Okay, not too, not too tricky at all. He's then going to have space on the front of his head there for a couple of little antennas. Whee! That's a sea snail. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Um, hey, Charlie and Ruby, don't go anywhere just yet. We're not finished. Um, we're also going to do uh, a couple of other bits and pieces. We've not got any um, little details on, so I'll show you how to do a um, some coral underwater. Really easy. Uh, coral is super duper easy. I'll just do one of these, but you can add as many as you want. Over here, where I've got a bit of space. We do a curve coming upwards like a backward C, and then flicks out and turns into a C like that. Okay. And all it is is curving up and in and out, up and in and out. And all you have to do is just keep doing that shape again and again and again, and you end up with some um, coral that's just lying and dancing about in the in the waves. Uh, Simone, if this is glitching, I can see the video is glitching apparently. Uh, I don't believe it is for everyone, but if it's glitching for you, then what it means is you can watch it again afterwards and it w I promise you it will be absolutely clear as a bell. You won't have any problems, okay? Um, right, we need to do Mr. Crab. Crabs are dead, dead easy to do. Uh, I'm gonna put mine on my treasure chest peeking over it. So what I'm gonna do, you won't see all of him here, um, but I'll just show you how to do his little snippers because uh, these are the, always the fun bits. Um, we're gonna do a little U like that. And then if we were going to join it back up perfectly, we would do the same shape on top. We're not. Instead, this is going to be a bit bigger. It doesn't join up. Oh, no. Dun, dun, dun. The reason is because we put in a horizontal line like that. There's one snipper. I'm going to do the same again, but the other way around this time. Do a little really gentle curve like that. And then should we try and join him up? No, we're going to miss. Oh, no. Dun, dun, dun. There you go. Okay, we've got two snippers now. We'll have his little head poking over the top. And his head is just going to be, it's not quite a rectangle, it's not quite a square. He's just sitting there guarding the treasure. And we can make him look like he's looking up by drawing two eyes near the top of his head. Or you can make him look down like he's looking at the treasure chest by drawing two little eyes near the bottom of his head. There we go. Um, he needs to have all his legs. And for, for this, we're going to do some uh, little curves. So they're uh, like the letter N. And there. Okay. Uh, I'll do another one here. So it's a curve that's coming around like that. Does anybody actually know how many legs a crab has? Do we know that? Does anybody ever count it? I don't think anybody in the history of the world has ever counted a crab's legs. Um, who knows? It's a mystery. Okay, um, so what we'll do now then is just add his shell. To add his shell, it's very easy. Again, it's just a curve on that side and a curve on that side. And there we are. Okay, and his little head's poking out of his shell. Super duper easy. And it makes it look like we've got a crab who is very happy and content. Ah, I've just remembered. There's a joke in Moana about a decapod. Decapods have ten legs, which means that we need to have five on either side, two snippers and four legs. So there we go. There we go. So we've got our crab there guarding our treasure chest. Lovely. Uh, right, and then our turtle. Once we've done our turtle, we are done and dusted, guys. So we will we will do our turtle. Um, I'm going to have it so that this particular turtle is floating along behind his best friend, the mermaid, okay? Um, to do a turtle, start off with the head, because that's going to be the closest bit to us. And... I would recommend that we draw him on a little bit of an angle. So I'm going to tilt my page. And then this way I can draw him so it looks like he's perfectly flat and horizontal, but he's not. And so we start off by drawing. It's kind of like a trapezium. Trapeziums are wider at the bottom than they are at the top. So you can see there. If you draw one perfectly round, that's okay. That's fine. Just means your turtle will have a round head. Uh, but the reason I like doing this is because it then... Can be the case that you put two little dots for eyes, not smack bang in the middle of his head, but to one side. Just like we did with our mermaid, we can give him a little smile. Not cheeky, he's just quite straightforward and happy. Um, but now, this bit at the back can act like um, he's got a little bit of a, 
a neck and some plump cheeks there too. And so we're going to do uh, his shell. The shell wants to be a similar shape to his head, but we do it by doing a curve up and down, very similar sort of dimensions. And then for this bit, we're going to do, uh, we're not just going to join him up, instead, a bit of the way along the line we've just done, a tiny bit higher, we're going to have a letter C, a backwards letter C, curling round. And then it's going to dip down and back up just where his neck is. The reason for that is that it will make it look 3D. It makes it look like there's a lid on his turtle. Um, we're going to give him some little details on his shell too. A little curve that gently goes down at the top of his shell will make it look like he's got a spot right on top. We can't see it all because we're seeing him from the side. But if you were looking at him from above, it would be a perfect round circle. And then here, we can put some other circles on. But they won't be perfect circles. No, 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 no. As mentioned, we need to make sure that we're looking at the, the circles uh, in the right way. So they're going to be slightly squidged circles. Okay. They're going to be a semicircle on his back as well. Okay. Um, flippers. I, I looked at uh, turtle flippers. They're a really weird shape, actually. They're not like most flippers on animals. You know, our, our shark's fins were a piece of cake to do. These ones are a little bit trickier, and it's because they can walk on land. And to make it look right, where his head is, and just where it joins up with his, his turtle body, we do a big curve coming out from underneath there, like that. Okay, that's around about as tall as his head is. But it's a big letter C. We're then going to come back in halfway up his body. That's halfway up his leg, so curls back around with a little C there and then we do a teeny tiny bump like that and at that point we can then go and join back up with his body and I'll do that again because we have the exact same thing at the back this time it's going to be a C that disappears off um, like it's dragging along behind him underwater so we do that then a little C a tiny bump and then join back up and doing back legs are easy peasy lemon squeezy because all we have to do for them is that. And ditto here. There we go. We've got our little turtle swimming along. Right. Um, one final detail that I don't want to shortchange you guys on at all. I want to make sure that you do have your illustrations looking as brilliantly perfect as they possibly can. Um, is to make sure that we give them some bubbles to show that they are in fact underwater. The more observant of you will realise that I am now talking a very long-winded sentence to try and cover up for the fact that I can't remember where I put my pen to do the bubbles. Oh, wait, here it is. <clears throat> and so for our, <laughs> for our mermaids, uh, we're going to draw some little circles. And there's a secret to doing bubbles to make people look underwater. Don't do them all the same size. Do little, then do big, then do little again, and then do a big one. And don't have them all the same distance apart. Um, this is the same as when we did stars the other week. You need to make sure that every now and again, you put some in closer to each other than the rest. It just makes it look that little bit more believable. Uh, ditto for the shark. Sorry, for the whale. I beg your pardon. Every now and again, a few closer to each other. Not loads. But there we go. It makes it look more believable than having just a straightforward line of bubbles all the same size. Okay. Um, now, just before you go, chaps, please do not forget, um, I am very, very, very uh, happy to say to you guys that you can go uh, with uh, your bananas if you so choose. Um, and this is as a thank you for the guys that couldn't get on last week because they hadn't been paid. I know that we're all having a hard time in lockdown. But if you do want to go on and go to my website, get 50% off my books, you can go on and type banana50 into shortandsmiley.com on the, the website. Um, I, I make virtually no money whatsoever when I'm selling them at 50% off. Um, but it's just to bring a little bit of uh, joy to, to everybody. So if you want to get one, uh, you can do the hardbacks uh, sign first edition hardbacks and softbacks are available um, if you want me to put in a little special message to anyone I can do I'm more than happy to do that um, however you do need to write that in the delivery notes uh, and yeah if you are feeling really cheeky and you're wondering what happens when you type in banana 51 instead of banana 50 well you know try it and see what happens uh, I'm not going to tell you what happens you just have to find out um, but yeah very very welcome to give that a go 
Um, I have not yet decided what I'm going to do next week yet. Uh, I am going to peel this guy and I am going to eat him. Um, so if you guys have any suggestions or comments, I would love to hear your thoughts about what we could do. As mentioned, we have previously done things like pirate ships. You could always put um, a sunken ship at the bottom of your ocean scene if you want to draw a new one. We have done castles. We've done that, and that's been great fun. Uh, we have also done in the past... Whoa, that, hey, that's a bit squidged. We've done aliens and things too. But I will be doing all of these sessions um, completely for free. doesn't um, cost you guys anything. But I will be doing uh, these sessions for free until we are out of lockdown every Wednesday at 1.30pm. So if you've enjoyed it, tell your friends, tell your mates. Uh, check out my other videos too. Uh, and if you have any questions, comments, or anything you would particularly like to do, uh, ping me a message and let me know. Um, that has been great. I now have a patio that I have to go and lay uh, because normal world, you know, keeps going. Uh, I have a banana to eat. Ow, nom, 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 nom. Um, and I hope you've had a lovely time. It's been great. Um, I'd love to see all your comments. Oh, and because I'm, I am actually sort of terrible at the marketing side of things, and I forgot to mention this, what you should do when you've done your illustration... Um, you can put it on Facebook or Twitter or anyone else, uh, anywhere else, I should say. And if you use the hashtag, draw with Andy, all one word. If you do that, I will be able to see it. And I will be giving out um, a free book to who I think has done the best artwork in this session. Um, so whoever's done the best underwater scene will get a free copy of my book. Um, but make sure you put it on within the next day. So by the end of tomorrow, uh, get your mum or dad to help you if needs be. And I will be uh, looking for beautifully coloured, beautifully drawn illustrations. And I want to make sure uh, that somebody deserving of it gets this. Uh, I am contacting the winner from last week's session doing the, the, uh, the giant food and tiny people. I'm contacting them later today. OK, thank you very much, guys. Uh, lots of love to you all. As per normal, this has run to basically an hour instead of 45 minutes. I need to get a bit tidy with my time, I'm sure you'll agree, but I hope you all forgive me. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.